This month, we're going to talk to our favorite developers. I love that because yes. it's WWDC coming month up.、Mm -hmm. coming up. I will get you a little frosty. <laughs> and now that Game of Thrones is over, you need a, <gasps> new, a new way to find more TV to fill that empty spot in your life. It's time to swipe left for iOS today. Netcasts you love from people you trust. This is Twit. iOS Today is brought to you by Calm, the number one app to help you meditate, sleep, and wind down. Summertime is right around the corner. Make sure you're relaxed and well rested for the sunshine. Get 25% off a Calm premium subscription today at calm.com slash iOS Today. And by HelloFresh. HelloFresh shops, plans, and delivers step by step recipes and pre measured ingredients so you can just cook, eat, and enjoy. For $80 off your first month, go to HelloFresh.com slash iOS Today 80 and use the code iOS Today 80. Don't forget, we have a survey for you that focuses on how you use collaborative software at work. It's very short, just take a few minutes. Please go to twit.to slash survey 14. Thanks. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Swipe left is bad, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. So I need some Tinder lessons, apparently. Swipe left is when you reject. Yeah. Swipe right is when you accept. Yeah. It's good for you not to know how to use Tinder. Yeah. I, I pretend that all the time. <laughs> What's this Tinder of which you speak? Uh, welcome to iOS Today. Hey, everybody. I'm Leo Laporte. I'm Megan Maroney. And this is the show where we cover all the latest news about the iPad. The iPhone, the Apple Watch, and the Apple TV.、Mm -hmm. Even though they have different, each of them, their own designated OSs, they're all iOS. They are, they are. So、uh, I suggested, since WWC is just right around the corner,、um, I thought maybe we could talk to、uh, some of our favorite developers. I think that's a great idea.、Mm -hmm. Yeah. June 3rd,、uh, the keynote for WWDC, you and I will be sitting here、mm -hmm. watching there. Hoping not to get booted off the air by Apple,、mm -hmm. uh, talking about their announcements. And I think there'll be some exciting announcements.、Mm -hmm. But you know,、uh, the best people to ask are the people for whom these announcements are intended developers. Mm -hmm. So I、uh, thought we would welcome James Thompson to the show. I love He, him.、Uh, has been on the show before. He filled in for you when you were gone. Thank、He、you, is James. <laughs> the、uh, developer, the creator behind PCALC, which is an amazing calculator for the iPad, the Mac, the Apple Watch. Um, the iPhone.、Uh, He's truly legendary. PCALC <laughs> is such a great story.、Uh, you know, the, f the, the, the f disagreement with Apple over whether it should be allowed to do notifications and so forth. We, and we all love, and everybody I know has PCALC installed. It's the、mm -hmm. preferred calculator. Well, you're all very kind. <laughs> <laughs> and I see you are a Lego、uh, figure connect collector. That is quite a collection. That's only、uh, half of it,、oh, it keeps going、man. on the wall. Gee, wow. <laughs> That's amazing. And I also, and I, I apologize for this, James, but I love looking at people's bookshelves. So、mm -hmm. I like to look at the titles. And you've carefully arranged all the real programming stuff right, right at the top. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I tidied the office before <laughs> coming on this call. Well, you didn't And I think if you look at those books, you can see that they're all about 10 years old. Yeah,、but. I have them. <laughs> well, a lot of O'Reilly titles. I have that Coco book, I have that XML book. Uh, it's fun though. Do you.、Uh, PCALC's written in Objective C, I would guess, yes? Yeah, it's mostly Objective C with some Swift at this point. So are you moving to Swift, the new、uh, Apple programming language? I, I'm writing some new stuff in Swift as I go along, but there's no point、uh, rewriting any existing code at this stage、right. because, you know, it works. So until such point that Apple says you can only use these new APIs from Swift. Which you know, might happen, but not for a while.、Uh, I think it's fine the way、A、it is. Apple can be tough on developers. I know the latest thing is、uh, everybody's going to have to get their apps notarized by Apple. Well, that's only if you've got an app that's not in the App Store. Yeah, you're established,、uh, so you're okay. You're cool. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it just means that if you've got an app that you're selling outside the store, you just need to jump through a few little extra hoops. Right. And it's so that Apple can have more security control over things and can shut down a particular version of an app if there's a problem without, you know, completely 
banning your developer uh, account and I th things like that. I think that. that's definitely a great way to do it because we, we'd seen malware use legitimate certificates, Turkish certificates in one case. And uh, so the notarization requires what you send the app to Apple. There's an yeah. automated review process. Uh, and then they say, yes, it's okay. And uh, yeah. put you through. So, uh, yeah. I, I've not done it, not jumped through the hoops myself because all my stuff is in the app store, but I, I gather it's not too bad. Good, good. And I hope at some, I hope at no point do they require that everything go through the app store. That was, that was my concern when I first saw the language is that. Apple yeah. Has. I mean, I think with the notarization stuff, they wouldn't be doing that work unless they plan to keep uh, right. the things open. And uh, if I wrote a program and wanted to run it on my Mac, I wouldn't have to, uh, Go get it notarized. I presume there'd be some sort of no, gate no. gatekeeper like s solution that would let me open any app at my yeah. Peril. I mean, if you're if yeah, um, I think there's still going to be a uh, well, who knows? You know, <laughs> One never that, knows. That's, that's the thing with WWDC coming up. You you know you know you can make assumptions, but uh, notarization might become uh, mandatory. Who knows? Right. So uh, what is it like for you to sit and watch WWDC? I know um, we should say that right, right away there's been rumors that there's going to be a calculator app on the new watch OS. Um, yep, and I heard some rumors of that before the rumors were official, so I'm pretty sure that one is true. Um, I, so that's the thing. Watching the keynote, it's like there's all the excitement about, you know, what are they going to introduce, you know, from from the perspective of a developer as well as the perspective of being a customer. Uh, you know, so you like to see the new features and what's coming. But there is that sort of little feeling of dread of, you know, there's 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 a word for it. There's, so Sherlocking, mm -hmm. uh, which comes from, I think it was Sherlock 3, when that came out and was shown at one of the keynotes and that directly overlapped the features of this third party app called Watson. So Sherlocking became known as the term for when your app has just been instantly made uh, uh, unimportant by Apple. We've seen it happen many times to many developers. PCALC yeah, is unique I, because unless they copied, you know, PCALC no, directly. <laughs> I don't see them copying or anything like that. I mean, yeah. typically Apple's built-in apps tend to be, you know, good, reasonably full-featured, but uh, not going into the sort of advanced user le level of stuff. So I think there's, I mean, I've competed with Apple's built-in stuff for quite a long time uh, on, you know, with the drag thing in the dock and pcalc and the apple built-in calculator so you know i'm i'm, I'm happy I, i'm you know i think it's a little odd that they would do uh, a watch calculator before an ipad calculator is that the so, rumor so they're going to do it because there is no ipad calculator there is an yeah, iphone a, calculator yeah but they're going to um, add so a I'm watch not, <laughs> they've never had a watch one you know they obviously don't have a tv one yeah um uh, I think those things both make sense, really. But you have a TV app. Yeah, I do, because, you know, why not? <laughs> yeah, once you've um, written it. But I think, yeah, the, I, I haven't heard any rumors about an iPad version, so we shall see. But, I mean, uh, will, but, their, will their watch app uh, be able to do this? <laughs> Peacock um, is, so, by the way, 42, oh, wait, well done. Other button. Oh. Other button. Other button. No. Oh, sorry. This is <laughs> why, by the way, watch apps are so challenging. The UI. The other button. The, it's dropping bananas. Um, it Congratulations. Is calculator. I yeah. love the bananas. Um, so, yeah, I doubt they'll be able to do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the, the interesting thing with the watch is that um, when you write programs as a third-party developer, you have to use this thing called WatchKit, which is a very simplified way of writing the software. Right. And Apple, for all their built-in apps, uses UIKit directly, which is what we use on the phone and iPad and everything else. So they will be able to do things that I might not necessarily be able to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, you know, maybe they'll open up UIKit. I say this every year. I don't think it will happen, but it's when it's like not an even playing field that I start to get slightly nervous of what they could do. But, you know, I don't, I mean, I don't think our watch app is particularly the thing that sells copies of the app. I mean, you can get it in the free app, I should say. Uh, 
So we'll see. Do you, do you, is what 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 does sell best for you? iPad, iPhone, or uh, um, as far as I can tell, it's iPhone. It's like eighty percent iPhone. Yeah, because uh, of course there's a billion iPhones, which helps. Mm -hmm. um, and there is a calculator on on iPhone, as I remember. So yeah, there is, and it you know you can it it's reasonably full featured. You know, if you turn it sideways, you get a sort of basic scientific kind of thing, but. Yeah, they don't they don't go into the depth of customizability and advanced stuff that PCALC does. So I'm I'm hoping that they don't. So because <laughs> it's my it's my main source of well only source of income at this point. That's so, nice though that you can make a living doing that. That's fantastic. Oh, it's nice, but it's like if I made my entire income from this, and then Apple turned around and said, "Oh, we've that decided we're going to mm -hmm. do this." Yeah, it wouldn't be the nicest thing in the world, but that's that's the nature of Sherlocking. The th the thing that uh, makes PCALC so great, and this is this is uh, the um, iPad Pro version, which is nice and big, big buttons, really easy to use. I mean, there are a lot of things that make it great, but all of the different look at all the constants that you provide. I mean, that's for one thing, that's fantastic, and th there's no way Apple's going to do this kind of detailed work, and all of the different calculators. Uh, that you have, um, you know, you've got a hex calculator. Every programmer needs that. You've got an octal calculator. I mean, if I needed to know how to go from fifty-one twenty in in decimal to to octal, well, I ain't, I sure as hell I'm not doing it in my head. Uh, even, yeah. Even binary, which is which is just that's this kind of stuff that makes it really powerful. You've got multiple registers. This is a super powerful calculator, which is just. You know, Apple's never going to do that. There's no reason to. It's funny because I, the calculator, Microsoft has open sourced their calculator. Mm -hmm. The calculator yeah. for many programming languages might be the very first thing you write. But and it, for me, it was literally the first yeah. program I ever wrote was PCALC uh, 27 years ago. But it's simple to write a basic calculator. If I just, you know, cover up everything and just do that. It's yeah, much more I mean, complicated it, to add all the features you've added here. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, most of PCALC, it's the user interface level of things. It's like right. so, like if you press and hold on a key for a few seconds, and you go into the edit mode where you can drag things around and build your own calculator. Oh, that's that, nice. that sort of stuff is complicated. That raises uh, an interesting question, uh, which is the the question of discovery, because uh, typically. It's true of Mac programs, but it's really true of iOS programs. There's no manual. Nobody's going to watch the video that you make. And so discovering features like drag and drop functionality is, is, yeah. is, is, t is tough. I think a lot of your users probably, I didn't know, <laughs> didn't know we could do that, right? Rearrange this. Look at that. That's really cool. Or just make, you know, <laughs> I can move my hex around. I mean, that's, <laughs> I don't think I'd want to, but I can. I can. So what? how do you handle that? Is there a way to make discovery easier for your users? Well, there is actually a manual. Um, if you click on the help button in the top right, that'll take you into a section that's got some basic... I don't know where that is, so I need a manual. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, and, that's, and this is a very good way to do it, of course. And I love it that you have an EPUB version of the manual, so I could put it in iBooks. Yeah. Um, so, is, you know, great. we've we've got that and we've got some basic tricks and tips and stuff. I haven't gone as far as doing, you know, like instructional videos and things like that. There's a certain amount of, you know, you, you can show people the sort of the basics and like, here's the keyboard shortcuts, that sort of thing. Look at all these and, keyboard shortcuts. That's so great. Um, if you've got, you know, if you hold down the command key for a few seconds, it will show you the um, what they are built into the thing or it should at least do that yeah. um there you go. and you know the the there's some of the gestures i think that is a problem with ios is that the the more well, it's not even just the advanced things because stuff like split screen and and things like that you really need somebody to tell you about that to find it um but i think with the mac we're just you know we've been using the mac for 30 plus whatever years it is uh, so we're kind of used to what the the options are there, and you know, or oh, if I hold down option and click on this, maybe it'll give me an extra feature or something. Um, yeah, it's it, it's difficult because you don't have the same amount of uh, inputs, really. I guess so. It's all down to gestures, uh, but 
I, I think, you know, writing a manual is a good first start because some people do actually read them. Do you like having hiding uh, features in here like the bananas? Yeah, I do. I mean, I literally just gave a talk at the NS North conference in Canada about Easter eggs, like uh, 30 odd plus years of Easter eggs, including some from Steve Wozniak and people like that. So, yeah, I love Easter eggs. Well, I'd love and to I, see I, that talk. <laughs> Uh, the video, I believe, is going to go up at some point soonish. I'll look for it. Um, so, yeah, I go back to sort of about 1975, 76 and keep going from there. So I wanted to ask you about all the uh, the lawsuits, like the class action lawsuits against not, you know, not being able to uh, buy apps outside of the um the app store and then Apple basically saying like, you know, developers could sue us, but you know, not because they're the real customer. What are your thoughts on all that that's going on right now? Well, I mean, part of that lawsuit, part of the basis of it was that prices were artificially inflated because Apple is taking 30% and developers are going to pass that on to the customers. And from my perspective, if Apple said, oh, we're going to make 15% for our cut instead of 30%, I'm probably not going to lower my prices by 15% because, you know, it's hard enough making a living as it is on the store. <laughs> and, you know, uh, it, you know, even if Apple was taking 10%, it's still hard to sell software. And uh, so I think the kind of one of the basic t tenets of this lawsuit doesn't, isn't really true. Uh, and I also, from a customer and, well, from a developer point of view, uh, one, of, one of the things that people want is the ability to sideload apps onto devices. And on Android and other platforms, what that opens up is a lot of piracy. You know, people taking an app off the store, you know, running it through some process and then just sideloading it, sideloading a, a pirate copy onto their device. And I mean, you can kind of do that already with iOS, with the developer accounts and things. And I, I don't really want that either. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you, and, what you don't want to do is have to police that. Well, I mean, what could I do to police it? There's, right. there's not really very much way. And, right. you know, uh, also, you know, I don't want to get back to the days when we're trying to write anti-piracy code into exactly. our apps. Exactly. Um, so, and also from a consumer point of view, it's like, I can imagine as soon as like you start opening doors like that, you'll get, uh, companies saying, well, you know, if you want to use our service, you should sideload this app on. And it's like, do I know what this app is going to do? You know, if it's not been through Apple's sort of, uh, processes and checking to see that it's not using some undocumented API to get hold of my contacts or, or whatever it is, you know, I don't want that to become the, the standard, uh, and I could see that very quickly happening. So I'm, you know, there's sometimes you build walls around your garden for a reason. Mm, true. Um, so as we talked about before, you're not going to WWDC this year. How does the lottery work? Yeah, that's a bummer that yeah. you couldn't, of yeah. all people, it seems like, well, so, if, if you're a famous so, developer, you should get it. <laughs> So they don't say exactly how the lottery process works. So my understanding is that it is mostly random, but that um, partnership managers and people like that might have a certain amount of tickets uh. at their disposal where they can say, well, you know, we want to make sure that Microsoft gets their right people there or Adobe or, or whoever. And, you know, I'm reasonably well known in the sort of small bubble of the developer community, but I, I'm not exactly Microsoft or Adobe. Um, I have one suspicion as to why I didn't get a, a ticket this year. And it's quite a sad reason in that my partnership manager died. Oh dear. Um, so I haven't really talked to people to, um, you know, find out who it is I should be speaking to and who's kind of like handling my account at this point. Um, I, one of the things is also I left it, uh, you know, to the last minute of not talking to people and <laughs> because I didn't, I didn't plan to go this year uh, because usually I do every two years because it's horrendously expensive. You and live the hotel in, prices. You live in Glasgow. I, 
Yeah, so I'm in the UK, so you know I've got to fly over. Yeah. But also the the hotels. It's like I I did a quick look at the oh, hotels, and it yeah. was three and a half thousand dollars for seven nights. Holy and cow! That that's not cheap. No. And uh, and yeah, you could get some Airbnb that's miles away from the actual convention center, but. The whole point of being there is to be right in the center of it. Last last year when I went, it was uh, when we arrived, it took us like an hour to actually get to the hotel because you sort of walk down the street and you'd bump into people because everybody, because when it was in San Francisco, you know, a lot of San Francisco is a big place. But when it's in San Jose, like pretty much everyone who's there is a developer and uh so you walk around and yeah, you see people and uh, and yeah. So at the last minute, I was like, well, I'll put myself in for the lottery and we will, uh, you know, if if I get a ticket, then I'll I'll make sure all the traveling happens and maybe I'll just sort of try and crash on somebody's floor in another hotel room or something. But I didn't get a ticket, so not going this year. You know, I I got the merch already made. You can see on my thing, I have the little panda badges oh, yeah. uh, so we had all those made and yeah they're uh, they are just currently sitting in a box oh. <laughs> <laughs> those are, yeah the 42 badges are that's a that's i a love sign of real these <laughs> you, you can get these at cottonbureau.com but I, you're not putting i guess you'll put the pandas up there yeah, I think that the so what I did last time was I had 500 made, which I gave out, and 500 which were sold, and I've got like the 500 that I was going to give out, and I think they are going to possibly get shipped to Cotton Bureau and added to the Good. store. That would be um, great, so yeah. that you can uh, afford the hotel next year. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but do you maybe, if you don't go? Is, do you, do you, uh, besides me, I think the big thing for any conference is seeing friends, colleagues, meeting new people. Yeah. That aside, can you get all the information? Yeah, I mean, Apple live streams most of the right. sessions and, you know, they put them up uh, after the fact for the ones they don't. And all the information is there. What you miss out on is two things. It's like being in the area is good because, you know, you can see everybody and you can talk to them and it's hanging out, you know, hanging out at events later. Like, you know, there's the... ATP or probably do a live show. Uh, John Gruber will do a live show. The Relay people will do live shows. And those yeah. are gr great yeah. events to, yeah. to be at. Yeah. Um, but aside from that, uh, having a ticket gets you into the conference center. And then there's the labs. And that's the best thing to spend your time on if you're going to WWDC because you can go to the labs and you can talk to the engineers who are actually writing the APIs that you're using. And, you know, if you have a question, that's the time to sort of go along and say, I don't understand how, how am I supposed to do this or, you know, here's some feedback on something. And, you know, that that's a really good thing because Apple, so very, because it's like a, a black box most of the time, you don't know who's working on things. And like... I discovered, like, that uh, a friend of mine was uh, project managing Marzipan. And nice. I discovered that last year. And it's like, he wouldn't tell me that because, you know, Apple people keep their secrets right. for the most part. Right. And He might uh, say something like, you might want to consider not working so hard in the Mac version of PCAL <laughs> because yeah, I mean, Marzipan, we should explain, allows iOS apps to run on Mac OS. Yeah, and... and that's one of the, the things that expected to be the big rev, big stuff that's revealed this right. year is how Marzipan works, really. Because, I mean, there's Marzipan to a certain extent in the system now because there's the four apps that use it currently. Apple's, you know, like all the, Apple's you, own. Well, the news, the stocks, they're not like the, the most important apps, but, you know, it, it was a proof of concept to right. get iOS apps running on the Mac. And this year is when it's going to be opened up to developers, at least at some basic state. And we don't know what level that's going to be. Um, and uh, I, you know, with the help of Steve Troughton Smith, I actually have a version of Peacock running in Marzipan and Mojave currently. Um and, you know, that's using unofficial things just to mess around to see what works and what doesn't. And it gives you some ideas at this point what you might need to change. I think it's going to be a while before the Mac version of PCALC is based on Marzipan. I don't think I'm going to do it this year. I think it'll probably, until such point that it is better than the existing right. Mac app. 
You're in a really nice what? position because you've written the Mac app, so you've yeah. got a native app. You don't need to. It's really going to be a benefit for people who don't have Mac apps but have iOS apps. Yeah, I mean, some somebody like uh, Marco Arment's Overcast, he can bring that over exactly. and have a, a Mac app for yeah. that and things like that. Uh, another example that I thought of was something like the Netflix app. I'd love like a native Netflix app on the Mac, and they could do that. I, I'm not going to say simply because, you know, I don't want one developer telling another developer what's simple. Well, um, and copy protection makes it much less simple. Yeah, this has been I mean, historically, the, the problem with Netflix apps on, a, on a computing platforms. Yeah, I mean, there are things like that, but you can use Netflix in a browser now. So, yeah. Um, it, it's. Um, you know, once the technology starts coming out and they do things like, you know, allow you to have uh, menus and things like that for, you know, for your iOS app and, and they begin to sort of meld the best of the two platforms together, I think that's when it's going to be really interesting. And the question is, what are we going to get this year? You know, how much is going to be made available to us? Um, and that's the exciting bit of watching the keynote and the state of the unions and all those things is like finding out what's available. Once you've got past that initial keynote and you've, you know, your software has got another year of life at least, then, you know, you can relax and you can watch all the other sessions. Yeah. Well, James, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Um, I guess we'll know oh. more after June. Yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to it. And you know, if you if you hear me crying in a corner somewhere, that, <laughs> oh, that's oh god, because if you get Sherlock, I am going to be pissed. But you won't because no matter what don't, they don't do, don't say don't say you won't. Because <laughs> no, you won't because no matter. Look at the, you've got in P calc. You've not only got a tape so that which I think every calculator should have. So to have a record of my calculations, I can email now. Apple's not going to put that into their calculator unless they. Dead copy you, and if they do, well, we shall see. <laughs> shame on <laughs> I, them, I guess. I, I, I am hopeful that the only thing I will uh, get partially shot on is the watch app, and we will we'll see what goes from there. That's not the end of the world. And anybody who has an iPad who wants the best calculator ever, yeah, that you could they're ever gonna imagine, a, you they're not going to have a game in their about screen. Yeah, so. no, that's yeah. right. Exactly. Um, and I'll I should point out, 27 years since mm -hmm. PCALC first shipped, which means you shipped yep. it when you were, what, four? <laughs> yeah, I'd like, I, I wish that was the case. Yeah. I mean, you, you were a kid, obviously, when you wrote it, right? I was at university. Yeah, so. yeah. That's yeah. really, um, there, are, there are very few apps that you can say have yeah. been around on, mm -hmm. on Apple platforms for 27 right. years. Yeah, wow. I actually, I... The only Apple platform I've never been on is the Newton. And I did <laughs> actually, I just bought an Emate. So uh, we'll oh, see. Oh, wow. That. So, yeah, they, they won't Sherlock that. I'm, I'm positive. No. <laughs> By the way, best about screen. Wait yeah. a minute, I guess got to show people the about screen. Because that's, that's, I mean, you probably put more work into that about screen mm -hmm. than almost all iOS apps combined. <laughs> and people say, well, what's so, tap it. And then I don't know what the hell is it's in here. There's everything in the world. There's cocktails. There's there's, <laughs> there's bananas. There's there's I don't you just grab. There's no gravity. All the bananas are about to float. It's it, put the sun on. It's crazy. This is I is this your this must be your playground for trying Apple <laughs> technology. Yep. Augmented reality is in this. 3D is in this. It's cray cray. 3D. No gravity and a fire. And those calculators work. If you can <laughs> tap on the buttons, they what? work. You're, what? What? True. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> okay, so I'm, you know, that's impressive as heck. Right? Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a little playground of just <laughs> doing things and messing around. And, <laughs> More yeah. bananas. And if you tap on the car. <laughs> Which one? The car? Well, yeah. okay. Uh, press the... Oh, uh, the problem is the car's flying at this point. So... <laughs> Uh, that's always the problem. <laughs> yeah. So it's got a speedometer. It's you can take a movie of your of your. There's the chase cam. This I don't even. Yeah. No one knows even all the stuff that's in here. Only James does. This is here. I'll reset the world. There we go. And yeah, the now problem we with got the, the gravity car. off the car is just going to fly off into space. <laughs> okay, I got to turn the gravity back. It's cr <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Anyway, lots of fun. There it goes.
<laughs> it's a I, flying I Elon car. Musk sending a car into space. <laughs> he uh, beat him by years, folks. Years. This is James Thompson. Thank you so much for all you do. Uh, Always a pleasure. Thanks for having me back on, and good to be on with you for a f for the first time. <laughs> we, we, yes, it's nice to meet you after using your product for, I can't say twenty seven years, probably twenty six. You might have. You don't know. Oh, I got. I mean, I got PCalc very early on. Mm -hmm. I know I did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, pcalc dot com, James Thompson on Twitter, and I'll put a link to the uh, in the show notes to our the episode that we did together because we walk through all of all those stuff. fun features. But I, it seems like there's more features because there's been an update. So, but I'll put a link to that. <laughs> <It's> crazy. <laughs> Thank you so much, James. Thanks, James. My pleasure. <laughs> nice to meet you me. again. Soon. Cheers. Bye, bye bye. He's great. I just love him. He, I do too. First time I've ever talked to him. Uh, but I feel like kinship immediately. Mm -hmm. When somebody's been doing uh, Mac software for 27 years, they're a, that's a serious enterprise. 27 years. Yeah. And he worked at Apple too. Like he, he worked at Apple, but then uh, in Gla from Glasgow. And then they were like, well, you're not going to move to Cupertino? And he said, no. And so they said. He didn't say no. He said, heck no. <laughs> yeah. Crap on that. So His accent was very uh, tolerable. I, I thought maybe I'd have a hard time understanding him. Uh, he has a great accent. He's got a great accent, but I, usually with the Scottish people, it's hard to tell what they're saying. Um, so <laughs> let's let's take it down. You need to calm take down. Take it down a, a notch, Let's Leo. calm down a little it's bit. It's time to do an advertisement. I can <laughs> tell. Is. Yeah. I can yeah. tell what you're saying. is <laughs> Leo, pull out the abs. Stop doing the accent. It's time to get calm. <laughs> Dot com. We love calm. And you can see why I need, <laughs> I desperately <laughs> yes. need calm. Calm.com is the ultimate way uh, to relax, to meditate. But I, I want to make sure people know that it's more than just a meditation app. It's a sleep app. It's music. Let's start with the daily calm. This is a daily meditation. By the way, I just, they started doing this. They said, how many people have listened today? It's 10 a.m. Pacific time and already... 45,000 people have listened to The Daily Meditation. Welcome to The Daily Calm. I'm Tamara Lavitt. And today we'll explore so ways already. to allow the breath to flow at its own natural pace. <sighs> Start by taking a comfortable position. Don't you, I'm just saying, even just that few seconds of Tamara, don't you already feel kind of like, oh, it's, it's, a, it's a case of just... It's not even hard work, just being aware and mm -hmm. saying, oh, yeah, look at this beautiful view. You can change that uh, all the time, anytime you, you want. Um, Calm has so much more than that. There, It's a great way to go to sleep. And look at all the sleep stories and all the categories, fiction, kids, music, nature, nonfiction. Na uh, you want to hear about Easter Island? Here is uh, Alan Sklar. Good evening. Hi. Hi. I'm Alan Sklar. I'm going to go to sleep already. And tonight's sleep story offers a true adventure to ancient marvels. By the way, you're going to learn something by listening to this. So that's what's really cool about all of these. Here's uh, uh, soundscapes. So there's, you know, a lot of people like to have, have this in the background. You could play this through your home hub, mm -hmm. um, or you could play it through your Apple TV, or you could just um, iPad speakers are so good. I usually just have it on the uh, on the iPad. This is light rain. There's waterfalls. <laughs> baby, shh. This is for your baby. Shh. I need to have that so I can just play it for you sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> or you could play Train Ride. Actually, this makes me sleep. Mm. Uh, so, and by the way, you can also download sleep stories. So if you're on a train or a plane, you can listen to those as well. Lots of meditation. Some with less guidance, some with more guidance. You can even have a timed meditation that has no guidance or open-ended meditation. I think that's really nice. And music's kind of amazing. Moby released his new album exclusively on calm.com. You get all this... And a whole lot more if you go and get a Calm premium subscription. And we're going to give you 25% off right now at calm.com, C-A-L-M dot com slash iOS today. You get guided meditations on issues like anxiety, stress, focus, a brand new meditation, as you see every day, because I am a premium member. Calm Body, a 10-minute guided video lessons on mindful movement and gentle stretching. I need that. 
That's what I really need. I'm going to have to do that. Endless options of relaxing music, soothing sounds. Of course, those great sleep stories with famous people, too, like Stephen Fry. If you're missing Game of Thrones already, uh, Braun, the sellsword. Jerome Flynn does some really nice stories. Uh, we were we were traveling New Zealand with Braun last night. Explore the moonlit jungles of Africa with Leona Lewis. And then it's a nice way to wake up. You wake up, you get the guided meditation, and start your day just right. This will change your life. 200,000 five-star reviews. People love Calm. I love Calm. And you get 25% off a Calm premium subscription right now. Calm.com slash iOS today. C-A-L-M dot C-O-M slash iOS today. And unlimited access to all of its content. And there is a lot. I love the Moby stuff. I love long ambience. So beautiful. There's also music for focus. When I'm working, I'm sure James, when he's coding, a lot of coders like uh, to listen to some music with no lyrics, mm -hmm. but just something that kind of focuses you. Something like uh, like this. And just have it playing in the background. And there's something about it that really helps you uh, get work done. And there's a ton of these, too. You want something a little more, let's try a little more exotic. This is so great. Calm.com slash iOS today. Thank you for your support, Calm. And actually, I love this. Oh, look it. Here's Silence and Air featuring Liz Cooper. I wonder if she's silence or if she's air. Oh. <gasps> See, this is great to have this in the background. Yeah. Yeah. While for you're open working. Plan offices. It's great. Yeah, actually, that's a great idea. Yeah. And they have a variety of lengths, including, you know, you can go, uh, some of this music goes as long as an hour. Mm -hmm. An hour and three minutes, to be precise. That's good. Really get you into the flow. All right. Let's relax. I'm flowing. All right. So um, I. If have... I'm flowing, I'm going. <laughs> I have a few corrections. From last week. Was I here? You were here, and it's me. Thank God. It was me. I, I made all What'd you say? You asked me if you could use Hey Siri with the Powerbeats Pro, and I said no. Yeah, yeah, hands-free. Yeah. but I think you, I even said, no, you can, but maybe I didn't. I got so many emails, so I don't know if you did. That was uh, one of the selling points was yeah. hands-free Hey yeah. Siri as well, and you could do that with the new AirPods. Right, so too. I apologize for that. Um, and also, I said that you could see that a new Netflix TV show was released on the TV app that I showed, Colonel. Yeah. Um, no, it's they have digital releases, but you can't see when uh, Netflix. Netflix is famously uncooperative. Yeah, that's that's, that's the, the real issue. that's yeah. the real. So problem. I apologize. Um, I'll never do it again. I will never. <laughs> yes, you will. Make another. I mistake. apologize for not stopping her. Yeah, exactly. I, I didn't know anything about the Colonel thing. So. I'm glad that you're uh, you've calmed yourself down because I want uh -oh. to rile you back up. Uh oh, now I just what? Saw this story this morning uh -oh. on Boing Boing. Corey Doctorow. Love Corey, and he um, is a good riler. He is. So there's a 16 year old. Her name is Jackie George, and she created an app called Bad Ombre, um, and it won an award. It's been in the App Store for a while, and uh, it's sort of it's 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 making fun of the current. Uh, political situation. I think you could call it an anti-Trump app, um, but it was removed from the App Store. And it was also removed from the Google Play Store. And because of certain things, one of them being that it had swastikas in it and it had uh, also... Immediately, by the way, that's a problem, especially in Germany. You cannot sell anything that has swastika. Right, so, but they're, they're mocking racism. Yeah, but I have to say, Apple has been very clear: no pol politics in its apps, uh, and they don't want to take a side one way or the other. So they just say no politics. Period. They don't want to take apps. a side one way or the well, other. Well, they don't want to say, well, it's okay if it's against Trump, even though or they or against racism. Well, like racism is different, but this is not an anti. This is who's the bad hombre in this? Uh, it's Trump, and that's fine. So they so, so one of the things was that was fine. They had a picture, and they said some of the people on the team thought it was Hitler, and she said no. In fact, it's Donald Trump, and they don't have to change that. She does. That's not one of the things she has to change. Oh, so what does she have to change? She has the anti-racist. Well, she has to take out the swastikas. Well, and yes. Well, are we supposed to pretend like swastikas never existed or don't con currently no, exist? No, or and that she can do that elsewhere, but she can't do it in the App Store. And that's, that's Apple's. That's Apple always been Apple's policy. And remember, some of that comes from the fact that in some 
in Germany particularly, you can't sell, you can't, swastikas are not allowed. They're very sensitive about that. Anything glorifying the Nazi past is prohibited, including any game app program that has a swastika in it. But if and you're actually, not glorifying I don't, it, like you're, she's making fun doesn't of it. Ma that's not so the are issue. We, so what, I mean, so we're supposed to just pretend like they're, they're, they don't exist? Uh, no, they exist. And they, in the proper historical context, you could talk about them. But I don't. I think I agree with Apple. Mm. Uh, swastikas should not be used in uh, in apps. I'm gonna. I'm gonna respectfully disagree with you. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, in any event, that. it's Apple's choice. This is normal. Apple does this. Has always mm. done this. Go ahead and you know. I mean, <laughs> we wanted to put our iOS Today app on the mm -hmm. Apple TV, and Apple said you can't because it has the word iOS in it. Mm -hmm. That's their right. I mean, I don't. I'm not happy about it. I think we are a show that t that celebrates the glories of iOS and shows people how to use iOS. It's all for Apple's benefit, but they don't want their trademark in the name of the show. That's their right. Mm -hmm. I mean, in I fact, to their credit, they have never said to us, "Don't use that as the name of the show." They just don't want that name right. in the App Store. To, they could go after us and say, "Hey, you're using our trademark in right. your show name." Yeah, and they haven't done that to their credit. So. I uh, would like them to work, especially because she's a young developer. Like it seemed, it was very difficult. Google reinstated it right away. It was difficult for her to get the. Um, to, to so Google's version, did they take? She took out the swastikas, and that was it. No, I, th I don't, I don't think so. But Google reinstated it. Yeah, right away. Even with the swastikas. I, I believe so. So. And that's I, by the way, Google does not uh, block stuff. Uh, for political reasons. Yeah. Apple so does. I think, um, I don't think when you talk about uh, like clan, I want to make it perfectly clear. Like, I don't think it's, you know, clan hoods and swastikas are okay. And I understand that they're, that they're, I mean, obviously like I, I'm. But where are the swastikas know. used in the game? Is it go flying through the air and you catch them and get rid of them? Is it that kind of yeah. thing? Yeah. Yeah. See, that's different. Right. Uh, that's that's what, not that saying, was my point. boys and girls, here's a symbol of a hateful regime that's not what they're saying. They're using it as a game token. I don't know if they're, I don't know exactly how they're using it. But my point is that uh, we can't just erase history. Like no, no, and Apple's not doing that. There are history books and iBooks that have the story of Hitler and the whole story of Nazism and swastikas. In context, that's fine. I think Apple's probably correct. Swastikas should not be used in a game. Right? Um, it's not wiping the history out. They're saying it has to be done in context, in an appropriate context. Right. I would have to play the game to know whether they were. Yeah, we'd have to look at it. Appropriate. I context. doubt very but much. I trust Corey Doctorow. She's got a page that says, "And here, boys and girls, is a hateful period in our history, and this is what the symbol of it was." I doubt very much that's how she's using it. It looks like she's probably using it in that game. Um, there was so it's like here's a. Uh, Here's, you can, I can show you this, the tweet storm. Hateful messages do real harm. Let's clean up this mess. Trash 50 tweets and win. So, I mean, there are messages. So the tweets probably have swastikas in them. <laughs> no, they're, I think they're Trump tweets. Yes, of course they are. Yeah, so um, what is your point? Truthfully, Apple probably banned it for more than swastikas. Because, again, they've had... Well, they have did. A, they, they, yeah. they have this long list of things they that have, they did. They have a long history of banning apps that have a political point of view, which I kind of disagree with, um, but that's their choice. It's the App Store. And this is... If they applied it inconsistently, like if they showed favoritism and said, well, you can do it because, you know, you're, you sell a lot of apps and you, well, you're just a, some woman from somewhere and I don't care about you, then I would be upset. I don't think they have, they try not to apply it inconsistently. I think they're very clear in their guidelines. They don't want political point of view in their apps. And we've seen apps before be banned for a strong political point of view. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I think it's interesting that they said that the image of Trump did not need to be removed. That could remain. Well, yeah. Um, and I think he I think it'll president. be interesting. It's a good lesson for a 16 year old developer to go through this, and I hope pretty normal. On I got to tell you, pretty normal for kids at that age to discover the boundaries of the world. That's part of what they do at that age, right? Mm -hmm. And this is one of those boundaries. I don't share Corey's outrage at this. Uh, well, yeah, I think she also had the help of Philip Shoemaker, who was former head of the App Store for Apple, to um, 
to help her push it through, figure out what she needs to do. So hopefully yeah. So Apple did that. reach out and say, "Here, let's help." No, he's former. Well, head somebody of reached out, and has Apple approved it and put it back in? Uh, no, she still has to change it. Yeah. The other interesting things of this. This story is normal. Is when you're 16, you do stuff. Some of it's stupid, and then the world comes out and says, "No, you're not allowed to do that." You can't, you know, you can't use swastikas in a game, and you learn that lesson. I don't think that's a bad thing. Okay. Um, I think what the other interesting thing of this story is she lives in Naples, Florida. The app won an award, a Shorty Award, and she thinks that someone, uh, one of her neighbors, turned her in. Narked on her. Yeah. So, I mean, because it's been in the, it got through the app store approval process, as ours have not. Um, so, you know, she was doing something right. Uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll see about what happens with that. All right, uh, more news. Let's see. You thought I would be mad at Apple, didn't you? I don't. I I disagree <laughs> with you. I, it's okay for me to disagree with no, you. No, 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 no. I'm just wondering if the reason you thought I'd be outraged was that I'd be mad at Apple instead of disagreeing uh, with Corey. Well, I mean, it's so usually I, I agree with Corey. I am surprised at how supportive you are of <laughs> Apple in yes. this sense. Because normally I, I'm not. <laughs> I think it's a. Um, I think it's an issue that needs considering like that the app store, like who, why is the app store in charge? Like, I'm Because talking about the app store is in charge. This is something that we have to all get used to, which is Apple has just as, you know, I'm not as outraged as perhaps I could be. They won't let this in the app store. It's their store. Now, this is what that Supreme Court decision was about, which is can customers sue Apple for a monopoly? One of the things that will go now that the class action will go forward one of the things they're asserting is we should be able to buy apps that are not approved by apple and so that's the monopoly but as of now they have a monopoly on that platform i would i think it's a mistake i think one of the things that android does better than apple is they allow you to check a box and say i would like to get an app from some other store and it warns you and it says you do this at your peril make sure that store is trusted and in later versions of android they only they turn it on for one download and then they turn they, they turn it off for one download and then they turn the protections back on. Apple could do that. I don't think Apple will do that. But if this lawsuit goes forward, Apple does have some remedies and that would be one of them to create a third party allow third party stores. It's I think that's really this the issue is look, I, I paid fifteen hundred bucks for this iPad Pro and accessories. I should be able to put any app I want on here. And Apple says, No, you shouldn't. You should only be able to put the apps we approve on here. I think that uh, the fact that there's, you know, billions of iPhones, there's an iPhone in every pocket, and there's only one source of saying what's okay and what's not okay. Exactly. I think that's something to consider when, when power is restricted to just a small group like that. That is... I completely agree with you. That's right. why... Right, so I, that's why... I'm not saying that <laughs> Apple... Uh, but it is. That's the fact of the matter. This. I'm yeah, not yeah. saying Apple can't do this right. or that it's not their right. Of course it's their right. But it's also my right to say, like, this is kind of ridiculous. Yeah. So. And the truth and the truth is uh, uh, when when you buy an Apple device, I hope people understand that, that that's the, those are the rules of the road. When you buy an Apple device, Apple, and this is why I asked James about this plan to go forward with notarization. I'm, I'm concerned that Apple will extend these restrictions from iOS to macOS. Right now, macOS is an open platform. She could make a macOS version of her game. She couldn't sell it in the App Store, but that doesn't mean she couldn't sell it. Well, she's selling it, it in website. the Google App Store right now. Yeah. So she's, no, I mean, I'm just saying like that Apple like won't prevent it from macOS currently. But I am concerned that Apple down the road, because, see, their pitch is, well, by very carefully vetting apps... They don't let adult apps on here either. Mm -hmm. By very carefully vetting apps, we're protecting your security and we're kind of creating a, an environment that we believe is safe and proper. I agree, I agree with you 100% that it's your computer. You should be able to put anything you want on it. But that's just not the way it is in, in Apple land. So when you buy an Apple iOS device, that's the, kind of the contract you're making currently. I understand why the class action suit's going forward. And perhaps you should join that class. No, I mean, that's the argument that I'm not making the argument I should be able to put whatever I want on the device. That is not the argument that I'm making. I completely understand how the App Star wor Store works. I'm saying, hey, like you're in charge of, um, you know, what's in and what's out. And if you just say like someone, what if someone did come through with, here's my historical app that has. They would allow that. There's, that, there are apps on here that talk about Nazism. But not in a not game. Not in a game. And, and they've always said political. So they have rules, admittedly, at, with any rule, but, it's, but Apple seems to be particularly prone to this. 
the interpretation of it varies from time to time. And that's kind of, I think, a function of how many apps are in the app store, mm -hmm. how many apps get uh, are offered every day to Apple to approve, that sometimes this approval process doesn't work. And in fact, we know it isn't perfectly secure either. For instance, they uh, allowed WhatsApp on the, uh, on the app store and downloaded, and it turns out you can hack somebody running WhatsApp by a phone call. Mm -hmm. um, and so it isn't a perfect process, but uh, it is Apple's process. And if I think you can reasonably say, I, w I don't want them to have a monopoly on the stuff. I should be able to install stuff from other places. I don't think you can reasonably say, well, I don't want Apple to behave this way with the App Store. I think that that's not your choice. That's, well, I can say whatever I want. Well, you can say it, but that's right. not... It's Apple's choice, not anybody else's choice. Right, but I mean, I th can say if enough people, I mean, they've certainly switched. They're their, never going to change that because they've changed be their opinion, letting apps in and out. There they're was never, the they're never going to change that, and I'll tell you why. Uh, for all the voices raised, they're a fraction of the billion users who continue to buy the device, and those billion users buy those devices, in Apple's opinion, in part because of the protections provided them by the App Store. So Apple feels like, well, maybe a lot of people are complaining, maybe some are even suing, but that's a fraction of the consumers who are voting with their dollars for our very expensive items saying, yeah, we like the way Apple runs its app store. So we should just throw up our arms and say, well, they, sh they can You should do buy an Android device. <laughs> okay. okay. That's, well, literally, that's your choice. You have choice. If I Apple, if, if. Truth to tell, Apple wants Android to succeed just as Microsoft used to want Apple to succeed because otherwise they are legitimately accused of being a monopoly. And uh, and if Apple was a, were 80 or 90 percent of all the phones sold in the United States, then I think they would quite reasonably have a problem uh, as a monopoly. But they're not. You ha And Apple says this even in their filings in court. You have a choice. You can buy an Android device. But I think they have changed. Like with Telegram, they took Telegram out because there were there was adult, pornography, you know, adult, adult stuff. And then it was they fixed it, and then they put it back in. And so I think that there's a way in which they fixed it by, as with all other apps, putting in a switch that says I don't want to see adult content. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly how other apps do it. Apple has rules. I again, the, admittedly, they're not perfect in enforcing them. But they attempt to be consistent and uh, and uh, applying those, and I think if you if you buy an iOS device, you're tacitly agreeing to those rules. And you could say to Apple, "I want you to change," but you're going to be one of say several thousand or even a million compared to the nine hundred ninety nine point nine million other people who are voting otherwise with their dollars. So I think. You should buy an Android device. I use my daily carry is not an iOS device. It's an Android device. And that's a good part of the reason. You know, it sounds silly, but one of the things Apple won't let apps do is interact with other apps. So I play Pokemon Go. Don't judge me. <laughs> but on iOS, Pokemon Go is the same as on Android. But there's something I can't do on iOS. There's a third-party app that I use uh, in Pokemon Go on Android that can open up, overlaid on top of Pokemon Go and help me choose the best characters and help me rank my characters. Can't do that on iOS. So I almost always will go to Android to do, I, to do Pokemon Go for that reason alone. I can give you more examples. Uh, I like to, and I recommend often people use Wi-Fi analyzers and heat mapping programs. You can't do that on iOS because Apple will not allow third-party programs to access information about the Wi-Fi radios. You can on Android. So when you buy an iOS device, when you use an iOS device, you are agreeing, in fact, explicitly agreeing to the terms Apple lays out for that device. One of the things they say is, well, overlays are dangerous, which they are inherently dangerous. We will not allow those. They say we don't want any third-party program, rogue program, to access our Wi-Fi radio. That's to protect you. If you want that capability, there is a choice. If you are content with that, then you should buy iOS. And that's why people say, I'm not sure I, I agree with it, but that's why people say iOS is safer. Mm -hmm. All right. We so there's on? a reason. I mean, yeah. I think that's, you know. No, I get it. I, I, have, a, I have an Android phone. I'll lend you. You want to try a Pixel 3? <laughs> Uh, You've done it before. You do that yeah, swap with the Jason. Record, I haven't bought any you of these iOS devices. You have. What, yeah, well, what do you think? I mean, would you switch from uh, an iPhone to an Android device? 
<sighs> because of this. So you could have over... swastikas in your game. <laughs> I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want swastikas in my game. Um, and I'm interested to see how this plays out and if she's able to change the game in a way that still is a game against racism. It's not against racism. It's blatantly against Donald Trump. Well, you haven't Bad ombre. No, what's the, even the name is. Okay, so the anti-Trump game that Apple That will says, not be allowed. If she wanted to make one against racism, I think she could get that through. Okay. Well, weird that they allowed the, the they image don't want partisan, of Donald they don't want, Trump to... They, didn't, they, they don't want apps to show partisan. they said she didn't have to change the image of Donald Trump. Well, it may not be the image. It may be the way the image is treated. <laughs> Uh, they've done this before. Uh, you know, I have to look at the exact guidelines, but they're, they're I think, are very clear. No partisan politics allowed in our pro in programs on the App Store. That would be counted as partisan politics. I don't, are you sure? Because there's been lots of anti-Trump. There are lots of anti-Trump apps in the App Store. There's like the one where you could like write something on his, you know, when he held up the thing. There's lots of that. That's not anti-Trump. That's just writing something on the bill. Okay. You could write a good thing. Like, aren't I a smart boy? <laughs> you could write that. <laughs> Let me look. <laughs> no, no, we don't have to continue this. But uh, there have been other cases, and by the way, politics that are not U.S. politics. Um, there have been, uh, uh, you can't, for instance, have anti-Islam uh, uh, cartoons on, uh, on the apps. Right. You can't, I mean, you, they're, they're, Apple, I, they may, again, they may not be consistent just because of the nature of, the volume, yeah, but they attempt to be consistent. Right. And so I dump have, Trump for messages. This no, <laughs> okay, kind of <laughs> okay. Maybe they will. Maybe they will allow that. You know, that's the Punch problem. The Trump. Okay, that's pretty clear. Brawl. Yeah, no, you're right. Trump's wall. Build it huge. Trump dump. I wonder if they wait until people complain or that's what, what the I deal mean, is. Clearly, I, I think it's not consistent. I, I yeah, I and no, and I understand that. at the volume. I mean, that is the problem of our day. Like nobody's saying like we love Nazis on YouTube, right? But like they're going to be good, on there until someone them off. finds yeah. them and gets them off. That's the by the way. <laughs> there maybe that's a better comparison: iOS or YouTube. Which do you trust your kids with? Yeah. Well. That's true. I mean, I'm not talking about like, well, save the children, you know, just. <laughs> well, Apple is kind of. Yeah, that's why they don't absolutely. allow adult content. Yeah. Yeah. And that's their right. And I never said it wasn't their right. Like, I understand that that's my contract right. they're making when I buy. But I also think that I, uh, I can still complain. Yes, you can. <laughs> Nobody All will right. stop you. Let's talk about something happier. Um, Microsoft Earth uh, is, uh, it's the new Minecraft that is being developed with a HoloLens team, and it's going to. It looks interesting. They're just clearly to compete with Pokemon Go. Yeah, it sounds like it. Um, or even Fortnite too. I mean, I mean, not. To yeah, but you don't play Fortnite. Fortnite. So the idea is you have to walk around, and in in your real world with augmented reality, you're going to place objects from Minecraft. Right. I mean, competing with Fortnite in terms of eyeballs and to get time kids. and everything. Well, yeah, of course, they've yeah. lost them to yeah. Fortnite. Um, so it's in a closed beta over the summer on iOS. And I applied. Be available. Oh, you did. Oh yeah, of course. I love of Minecraft. Course. I love this video, by the way. This this young woman who's a skateboarder. She's walking around. She's brand new to town, and she makes it her own. You know, as her parents are moving into the new house, she's walking around getting to know the neighborhood, and she makes it her own by putting Minecraft blocks and uh, objects around in her neighborhood. This, it, by the way, is exactly how the game does not work. <laughs> so it's often the case especially Microsoft seems to be guilty of this didn't that look like Christina Warren I thought it was for a uh, minute yeah. it's often the case that uh, Microsoft overplays what you can do with augmented reality like she's not looking through her phone which you would have to do to see any of these things they seem to be actually in her world mm -hmm. that's not how it is you have to hold up your phone to see them. Right, like the Pokemon Go videos before were. Yeah, it's it's often. Better. But they were. It's still pretty great. Though. They often oversell what AR is. Well, mm -hmm. it is, except you have to hold, look at the world through your phone, mm -hmm. which I'm not cray cray about. Until we have the kids are doing it anyway. Might as well just yeah exactly. give them something to look at. Make them at least. She said, "Not bad." As Dad's moving in, <laughs> I like my town. It's not bad. And by the way, I'm putting a tower and fireworks on our house. I can't wait to play this game. Yeah, I think it'll be fun. Um, all right, let's. So we asked for some names for uh, our podcast uh, to get it into the App Store, as we were talking about before. That our iOS Today app is uh, not getting into the App Store, um, and I got a lot of feedback. Russell from Australia suggested we call it iDevice Today. 
We could get away with that. Mm -hmm. It's a <laughs> terrible name, but we could get away with it. Angela suggests Apple today. No, nope, um, can't do that. That's the same problem. It's their trademark. You can't have an app that says no. Apple. It says well, I, if they don't like iOS, they ain't gonna like Apple. Yeah, but that's Apple. their trademark. They don't. The, the, what they're complaining about is the use of their trademark in yeah. the name of the show. Yeah, there's no other apps. Yeah. Uh, that, except Apple apps. Yeah. Okay, so we can't do that. Uh, and uh, Matt says the podcast that shall not be named. Yeah, like that. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> which would de I think definitely attract more downloads. Yeah. <laughs> Why? And I didn't write down who sent this, but um, I E Y E O S today. That might be an interesting I, thing to try. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have to talk yeah. about that. I O S. Whoever I Wes might be. <laughs> yeah, I O Wes. Thank I you, Chicken Wes. Head. I O Wes <laughs> today. I O Wes. I O, yeah. I like that. And one. somebody suggested iOS now, which we gently pointed out doesn't solve the problem at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, not really. Um, <laughs> Newton today. Um, okay, so we have a question from Ryan that I don't have an answer to, but hopefully you do, um, that he sent to us through YouTube. So let's... Hi, Megan. Hi, Leo. Ryan from St. Louis. Hi, Ryan. I have a quick question around searching your messages. Say I want to find the word Tuesday in a message thread. Mm. I type the word Tuesday, I click search, and I see the appropriate thread I want. Well, what if I've said Tuesday more than once to that person in the lifetime of that thread? How do I find additional entries? I don't want the most recent one. Hoping you know, I've got no clue. Enjoy the show a lot and tried to keep it to 30 seconds. It nice well. job. So I'm searching for two, I presume he means in, in the mailbox. No, he means in messages. Oh, iOS. in messages. Well, yeah. I can't help you there. Because <laughs> <laughs> it does, it will do that in the mailbox. It'll show all yeah. the messages in the uh, and mail that have Tuesday in it. Um, so he's saying... So like he if, doesn't want to see the first Tuesday. He wants to see the second Tuesday. Right, basically to search within a thread. Yeah, no, normally with almost every search I've ever encountered, there is some key to say, okay, next. Mm -hmm. If you're searching in a word processor and you find Tuesday and you say next Tuesday, mm -hmm. you click a key, whatever that is, and it'll take you to the next uh, mm -hmm. occurrence and the next occurrence. So th that isn't in messages. No, no. Um, you can show my screen. There's uh, nothing. Yeah, I hate to show messages because you never know what's in <laughs> this there. This is fine. It's just us. Husband much. and... Milo, Milo trying to figure you out. You call your husband husband. I do. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> um, so yes, uh, husband. If you That's search good. I like it. for here's a good one, wine. <laughs> wine. Um, and I have all these messages where um, wine has appeared, um, and uh, but it doesn't show you. It shows you yeah. all the messages. I'm not sure. I want to. I don't. I haven't. Don't I hit that. that. Don't yeah, touch. Okay. No. Go away. Thank you. Um, so, <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. I have to remember that. So when you say, go away, Kevin will just switch to some other yeah. shot. Okay, Let me, that's good um, okay this, this one's fine. I'm just uh, talking about um, something. I don't know. But but I, I found wine in here, but I can't find it again. Like it doesn't, there's no way to next search wine. again. There's no next. Well, there's no. That's, um, that would be nice to fix. Yeah. It's not, there. you can't search within a thread. And I did tons. So what you need to do is sign up for an Apple developer account. They're only $99. And then you can report that as a bug in the bug reporting system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just $99. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but that's, by the way, that is exactly how you do something like that. You make, you, you report it in the bug tracker as an issue. Uh -huh. We And then they, then they, in every case, they will take it. They will add it to their list of issues. And then they, you have to, you can't fix everything all at once. So you prioritize. And I bet you it's already in there. I'm sure any developers looking at that saying, yeah, we should have a next Tuesday button. Right. Or just being able to search through a thread of like all my messages with my sister. I'd like you to could see. export. Can't you export your messages? Uh, you could. Yes, you could. That's so what if you, you export could. your messages and then open them in a, in a program that does allow that, yeah. like Microsoft or not Microsoft, uh, Apple's um, pages, uh -huh. you could do, do Yeah, that, you I could think. do that. Another when I, I tweeted this out to see if anybody had a solution and the only solution was use WhatsApp. <laughs> does WhatsApp allow that? Yeah. Don't use WhatsApp, this. whatever you do. Yeah. There are two reasons not to use WhatsApp. Reason number one, it comes from in, uh, Facebook. The heck with them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no, I refuse to run any Facebook apps on any of my devices because even if it's Instagram or WhatsApp, you're giving Facebook 
every bit of information from your device. That's problem number one. Number two is security issue. Terrible security issue last week mm -hmm. uh, where there's an Israeli firm that uh, makes uh, what they call zero days, unrevealed exploits, and they sell them to governments. And by the way, they say, oh, we only sell it to governments, but they sell it to governments like Saudi Arabia and Iran. They don't care what government, as long as it's a government. In fact, we think it was Saudi Arabia that was using this exploit to take over, literally, entirely take over uh, cell phones of journalists and dissidents that they didn't like. And the way you do it is you make a phone call to WhatsApp, even if the phone call is not accepted, is not picked up. You could do it in the middle of the night so no one would even know. And then the, once the phone call is picked up and your entire iPhone is compromised, the next thing they do is they go in and they erase the record of the phone call. So you wouldn't even know that you got that phone call. And there is no way because of, this is what really irks me, because of the security Apple imposes on the iPhone, once you've been infected, there is no easy way to go in and detect that because Apple security prevents you. Only Apple could do that. So don't put WhatsApp on your, yeah. <laughs> your iPhone. In fact, increasingly, I'm of the opinion, as many security experts are, that the iPhone is only truly secure if you put no third-party apps on it. Only use Apple apps. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> we would have no app caps. Yeah, Every, the app not. caps would be, today we'd like to talk about Apple stocks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> tips. Have you seen this app called Tips? Tips. It's so great. Um, okay. I have another question from Jerry, uh, who is in the office across the hall. <laughs> <laughs> that Jerry? Yes. Okay. Uh, he wanted some advice on which iPad to buy. So he... Um, well, we pay Jerry very well. You should buy the most expensive <laughs> iPad. I told him to buy the least expensive iPad. Actually, so. you're probably right. Well, I told him to get... So he wants it just to stream shows. Oh, yeah. And, Perfect. And um, just to use GarageBand. I said, actually, the iPad Air, which I guess is... Yeah, that's the, the least expensive. I think 329 am I yeah. right? And if you shop around, you'll be able to get it for even less. The problem with the 329 is you only get 32 gigs of storage. Mm -hmm. So certainly for streaming content, that's not a problem. But mm -hmm. if you want to do things like edit music or edit video, you're going to need a little bit more storage than that. Yeah. So that starts at four ninety nine. Uh, there is a three twenty nine iPad that I guess is not in there. It's just, just the iPad. I, just the iPad. Yeah. Um, so but I agree with you. You'd probably be better off getting the iPad Air. Yeah, because the regular iPad doesn't have the newest chip in it. Um, but yeah, this, this is the A twelve so. Bionic. What's the uh, Kevin? What's the amount of storage on that for four ninety nine? Is that sixty four? I bet it's more than thirty two gigs. Um, we'd have to go to the store to check that. But um, here we go. Let's go shopping. Let's buy a gold one. Jerry's, got, yeah, starts at 64. Yeah. And so that actually is a reasonable amount of storage, I would say. And then you can decide, do you want to have LTE? That's going to add $129. And what's interesting about the way Apple does the storage these days is it's a big jump from 64 to 256 mm -hmm. in this case. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's no middle ground, uh, but it's not hugely expensive. If you are going to be doing your own content, you definitely want more storage. If you're just streaming other people's content, unless you're going to download it for offline use. And even then, 64 mostly... is plenty. That's, that's you know, 20 or 30 movies. How many are you going to watch? Yeah, yeah. And I think he probably does a lot of streaming too. So yeah. I think it's mostly, uh, in you know, in replacing a TV or like another TV. Um, and he says his son plays around with GarageBand. But... I have, yeah. If you're just playing around, storage is probably not an issue because mm -hmm. you're, you're not going to make 100 songs you're going to, well, you would have to, with, with lower storage, delete them as you go mm -hmm. or, or save them somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But they're fairly compact. They're not too bad. Um, okay, I have more questions, but we've run out of time. So I want to say that next week we'll answer your question, Mike, about shortcuts, which was very good. And thank you for sending a video um, because I have a video of Mike. So, um, yeah, send it to Megan at twit.tv. Nice. Put it up on youtube you can share it through apple photos i mean you can easily put it on youtube and no one else can and see i it have else. a question for yes. our esteemed audience yes. a shortcuts question i'd like to make a way that when i get in the car to drive here for ios mm -hmm. today my phone automatically says ah leo's leaving the house send a text message to megan oh. with an eta so Leah, and the message could simply be, I'm on my way, be there in seven minutes, or whatever the ETA is based on where I am and my departure time. 
that is your assignment. Oh, okay. It's a shortcuts assignment. Mm. Although you may need to use other tools. I'm not saying you won't. Maybe if this and that. I'm not sure. Um, if it's okay, it's acceptable if I have to uh, use some other way of knowing I've le left the house. Although I think the iPhone has everything you need. I think the that the shortcut could probably done, be done entirely with uh, iPhone sensors. So there's homework in this episode. There's homework. Excellent. Because I'm too lazy to figure it out <laughs> myself. Um, but you did have something else you wanted to show off. Oh, today, I right? do have a really fun thing. Yeah. And uh, if you have time. Yeah, ooh. we have time. Okay. I mean, that's why I, I waited for Mike. I bumped Mike for this device. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> Um, we talk all the time about big battery devices, mm -hmm. and I wanted the biggest <laughs> battery. This is for putting in my uh, carry-on on an airplane when I've got a long flight or, uh, you know, I want to watch, because my iPad needs juice, I want to watch uh, stuff on the flight. This is from our favorite battery manufacturer, Anchor. I've always loved Anchor stuff. And this is a 20,000 milliamp hour Whoa. which is big and there is a always until we figure out better uh battery technologies there's always a connection between the capacity of a battery and the size and weight of a battery so but this is fairly compact there's a couple of reasons i like it it has two connectors a type c usb type c connector and that offers something called pd if you have a modern uh ipad with type c or another device that accepts type C, uh, power delivery, look and see if it supports PD. That is a fast charge and often the fastest possible charging because it's going to be more uh, watts coming out of that port. So that's great. And then Anchor is famous for its IQ. This is a USB type A adapter. IQ charging, the theory on IQ is it'll give, it'll push out as many watts as your device can handle. And what I like about this is it even comes with the USB-C PD charger. I think this is a 30-watt um, charger. Yeah, it's a 30-watt charger. So this is, remember, we've recommended Apple's version of this charger for your iPad. It's not what the iPad comes with, but it will charge the iPad faster because it's a 30-watt charger. Uh, I can't remember what the one that comes with the iPad Pros, but I don't think it's quite so juicy. So you can use this to charge, and becomes it comes with a detachable USB-C cable. You even have the power delivery cable. Uh, that you need. This will charge your iPad. It will charge it fairly quickly right from this battery. And you're going to get three or four charges out of 20,000 mm. milliamp hours. So I think that's a very good uh, device. Now, what I forgot to do before I mention this is get you the price. So let me go to Amazon because yeah. Amazon will know because that's where I got it. I w I w I, the price was, was very attractive uh, to me. That's why I, uh, I bought it. Let me look at this my... This is the segment of the show with Stuff Leo bought on Amazon. <laughs> Somebody said, I didn't know you could do this. You can download every order you've ever made on Amazon and put it in a uh, spreadsheet oh, and then it. sort it. Because somebody was asking me, what's the most expensive thing oh. you've ever bought on Amazon? And uh, while I don't want to tell them, uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't so this was uh, when I bought it. And it, again, you should always shop around because prices go up and down. But when I bought it, this was $100. Uh, 20000 yeah, a lot of it's a fairly expensive. It is twenty thousand milliamp hours, thirty watt. But it comes bundled with this, which is you know if you buy this from Apple, is another sixty dollars. So it's nice to get that charger, and it is enough juice to charge a MacBook Air, even mm. which is which is pretty good, or, or some MacBooks. So that was the other reason, as I thought this would be nice to kind of have an auxiliary battery for my laptop. Anchor A N K E R is one of our uh, our favorites. Ninety nine dollars for that. But again, Anchor is often uh, discounted. There's, they always have big sales. i can show you one other thing I got. I got it. So I know we've always said how great the iPhone is, but I think it's a little big. So my new phone. <laughs> Was that it just ringing just now? <laughs> yeah. What, did you hear a ring? Yeah. It actually is a phone. I have to put a it's SIM in it. Adorable. It isn't that adorable? Uh, and I think it, sh it, makes your, it makes your head look a little big when you use it because yeah. it's yeah. <laughs> hello <laughs> you have to hold it carefully with two fingers uh, for those of you not watching it's about the size of a matchbox yeah mm -hmm. and uh but i just think it's the and it's a and it's designed to look like a nokia 3310 it is not a nokia uh, but here's the good news twenty dollars on amazon and uh, it works with any gsm carrier it does not work with verizon or but it's Sprint. an actual phone yeah the sounds good uh, you can store phone numbers in here. It's got the time of day. Does it have a headphone jack? Oh, man. Dang. <laughs> no, no headphone jack. 
But it does charge with a micro USB uh, charger. Can and you get apps from the App Store on it? No. <laughs> in fact, no swastikas were allowed okay, in the making know. of this phone. No, I think it's a it's a really cute little phone. You got a phone book on it. Look at that. Oh. I can add a new phone number. I should add your phone number. Yeah. The only problem is when you want to text. Those are those keys are tiny, and yeah. it uses T nine. So yeah, it's a lot I, of I've work. Already forgotten T nine. A lot of work to text with that. Well, it's pretty simple. Is you know, if you want a C, you hit the key two three times. Yeah. If oh. you want an F, you hit the key three three times. So that's pretty easy. If you want an R, uh, how about you want an S? You hit the seven key four times. You can remember that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty easy. I don't want to remember it. But I can. <laughs> Space. You hit the zero key. Now it's a little harder to get the number sign or the asterisk sign. That's a lot of work, but it's all in there. That little teeny weeny keyboard. A good emergency phone. You know, actually, uh, I bought it because it's just hysterical. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking of swallowing it and seeing what happened if somebody called me. But I don't think I'll do that. That seems unsafe. Oh, come and it on. does say not to be taken internally. But <laughs> I did think it'd be fun, uh, smart, actually, to keep it in the car yeah. as an emergency yeah, phone. Probably so, safer than swallowing it. Much safer. Yeah. yeah. And it's a USB C, so I could just plug it into the. Yeah. the car and uh, keep it charged up. And that way I'd always have um, an emergency phone. Love it. Pretty, pretty cool. All right, before we get to our app caps, and this week I'm going to remember to, to wear my hat. I forgot last week. Um, you didn't wear a hat last week. I was so broken hearted. I, I know. How many shows, how many episodes we've done of this show and this is, I mean, we've done hundreds. Well, because you see. didn't know I was doing the app cap, and so you didn't stop me, and then you were like, oh, that was your app cap. Where was your hat? That's the correction we should issue. It's I know, really. 446 really. shows, and the first time, no app cap was worn. Well, I think week. I blame it on uh, the cleanse that I'm doing. By the um, way, how's that going? It's going great. You seem like actually. you're normal now. Do I? Yeah, you didn't uh, seem normal last week. <laughs> no, I wasn't normal you last week. You were kind of a little bit uh, lightheaded. Uh, I feel like I'm normal. I'm sharp. I'm ready to argue. <laughs> you are sharp. <laughs> and, I will grant you that. Um, yeah, I have tons of energy. I'm on day eight. I guess I, it's 12 days. All she's doing is eating smoothies. No, I'm eating smoothies that I make. Smoothies so not and some French weird fries. Proteins. <laughs> Uh, it's got like lots of vegetables and the veggie smoothies, not yeah, just fruit. Yeah, and fruit, a lot of broccoli. vegetables, yeah. um, flaxseed for some protein. And then I'll have other, like I'll have a vegetable separate or like a little bit of hummus, a hard boiled egg a now and then. A little bit of hummus. Um, a okay. lot of water and no caffeine. <laughs> what a cleanse. And no alcohol. Ah, that's the cleanse. Yeah. How's that been? It's it's the it's designed sort of to cut cravings. So yeah, like I went. You to don't whole, crave it anymore. No, I went to. I had two of my book clubs. I have three book clubs, and two yeah. of them fell this week, and it was fine. I didn't, you know, I, I did. Because as everyone knows, book club mm -hmm. really means wine club. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> One of them we didn't even have a book. We were just. No, talking. I know. <laughs> it's the funniest thing. I've been to a few book clubs. It's a wine and cheese club, yeah. actually. So, I mean, for me, it was a water and uh, carrot club. That's so depressing. <laughs> and, <laughs> you might as well read a book in that case. Yeah, but so I'm starving. So please talk about some food. I am going to make you more hungry because okay. I'm going to tell you, oh, I, we made a delicious HelloFresh the other day. <gasps> I'll have to look at the website to find the uh, name of the recipe. HelloFresh is awesome. It offers home-cooked meals because you cook them. So by definition, they're cooked in your home, but with a no-shopping home-cooked meal. You, you will get delicious, fresh ingredients, the recipe, everything you need. It's really fun. It gets you out of your rut. It gets you out of your comfort zone because you'll be cooking unusual stuff. And it's so beautiful. It's packaged very conveniently but also ecologically so that you can, you know, you just pull out a little paper bag that has your meal in it. You don't have to go searching through all the parts to find the meal you want. Pre-measured ingredients, easy to follow recipe cards, never more than six steps. So that's, you know, that's, I like that. They even have, if you really want to get simple, one pot wonders. They have great vegetarian and gourmet meals, classic, you know, kind of comfort food meals, family meals. And you're never locked into your plan. You can change it to match your taste buds at any time. They all come to your door each week in a refrigerated, insulated box with lovely uh, dry ice, which is loads of fun for the kids. I do enjoy that part. Make family dinners fuss-free with HelloFresh's Picky Eater kid-tested and approved family plan recipes. And by the way, we do need that. We have a picky eater. But you know what he loves? See all those colored carrots? He loves the different colored carrots for some reason, which is, which is awesome. 
Make being in the kitchen an enjoyable time with HelloFresh right now. $80 off your first month. $80. You can enjoy fun menu features the dinner to lunch, which allows, you know, you make dinner and then you're going to have leftovers, which are great for lunch. I, it was a chicken recipe I made, and that's and that's exactly what we did. It was so delicious. I think it was a Dijon chicken. It was incredible. 20-minute meals for people in a hurry. Gourmet meals, one-pot wonders for people who don't like to wash dishes. Make deliciousness part of your every week. I love HelloFresh. $80 off? What? Your first month when you go to HelloFresh. HelloFresh. HelloFresh.com. HelloFresh.com slash iOS Today 80. And use the code iOS Today 80. First four boxes, $20 off each. Take back your kitchen with HelloFresh. Go to HelloFresh.com slash iOS Today 80. And use the code iOS Today 80 for your deal. Happy home cooks start with Hello Fresh. Hello Fresh. I'm going to be fresh today. Hello. Oh my God, you've grown hair since I saw you last. Uh, yes. So my hat was chosen by my our in studio guests um, from Sarasota, Florida. Cindy chose that and, and humiliated Brian. you like that. <laughs> so is this one also chosen? By uh, Brian and Cindy, did they also? Did you guys choose that one too? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> this these hats are made <laughs> by a woman in Petaluma. Both of them? No, oh. just mine. Oh, those. <laughs> My <laughs> sheep. They're very different. But you know, I'm a nice sheep. I'm a curly black wool sheep. It's yeah. very nice and soft. Yeah, you should just wear that all the time. I like it. So why are we wearing caps, Leo Laporte? No one ever knows. <laughs> Uh, I gotta get this just right because it's ab cap time. It'll look like a bald sheep. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's nice. much better. Then you gotta get the ears. Am I possibly wearing this wrong? You might very I think well. I, I be. think I am because the. I mean, as it was far as very I know, right, ears are usually right. in okay. the front. There you go. I like the other way, but that's fine. <laughs> that's better. That I knew there better. was something weird. <laughs> I had my head in the sh neck hole. Am I wearing this right? Yes. Okay. There's no way to wear that wrong. Doesn't that, doesn't she look like a tennis pro? Yeah, that that's. You have to talk valley talk if you're gonna wear. That. I do. Hello, like, dude, dude. Oh yeah, I don't. I don't. And do I that, have to so. talk like this. So last week I showed you an excellent app, Colonel, um, and I also that would show you when movies were upcoming and let you know. And I also showed off a, a note that my dad keeps, a, an Apple Note. <laughs> Of all the TV that, that he watches so and, cute. you know, whether he watches it with, with my mom or by himself and he's on episode four or five. Or, I um, almost got thrown out of the house. Lisa came home on Sunday night. Oh, you were watching? She worked late her? and I got home and I couldn't resist. 6 p.m. East Coast time, 9 p.m. That means I can watch the last episode of Game of Thrones. She came home. I was halfway in. Almost got thrown out. That is grounds for divorce. Do not do that. <laughs> So I said, no, 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 I know I'm going to watch it again. Let's rewind. <laughs> but the first, it's your first time. It's only your first time once watching the last episode of Game no, of Thrones. No, no, yeah. And I didn't watch it far enough. I'd only watched a half an hour, okay. so it was okay. Okay. We went back. We started over. I wanted to see it again. I usually, Sarah Lane taught me this. You got to watch each episode twice. That way, yeah. instead of 72 hours, you have 144 hours. <laughs> Yeah, and that's one way to do it. Um, so a lot of you guys recommended the app TV Time as opposed to the uh, Apple Note. So here, here's so TV Time. So you could time. record it there instead of have to do it by hand. Right. Um, so here's um, my profile. Here are all my Tilt shows. Tilt a little bit so we don't, yeah. All my shows. And these are my favorite shows. I haven't listed all my favorites. Veep and Stranger Things are two of my favorites. You can get the other... Veep box set now for a hundred bucks. You can. Did yeah. you watch the, the finale of that? Yeah, I didn't like it. No, so sad. Um, okay, so if I uh, want to see, these are all the shows that I have. Here's what's upcoming. So this is. So I've put in what episode I'm on. So I'm on episode season five, episode twenty three of. I'm glad Black you're finally watching Lost. Oh. So, no, Lost isn't. A, that's <laughs> that's Blackish. Okay. So Killing Eve, um, episode eight. That's you weird. told me that's good. I have to watch that. Yes, it's. So I love good. Sandra Cho. Uh, Is that and, her name? I think that's her name. Oh. Oh. Sandra. Oh. I added a Cho. 
Yeah, you did. Um, and Billions, I'm told that I need to watch that. Um, yeah, this season's been disappointing. Oh, really? It's a great show. The first few seasons were really good. This season's inconsistent. Some shows are good and some shows are not. So it also strange. It will also tell me when. So this is the newest episode of Stranger Things. Season three, episode one comes out July 4th. What? Oh, my God. So it'll tell me Thank when. God. So, so this does tell you what's yes, coming. And that's does. on Netflix. Yes. So, that w so if you want to know what's coming up on Netflix, right, that will tell is, you. Yes. TV, exactly. well, I can download this right now. I'm going to race Colonel. So then also I can discover new shows. So it uses all kinds of things. It doesn't, it doesn't quite do the same thing as Colonel, though. No. no. Colonel is more for movies. This is yeah. more for TV. Okay. This is... Um, so I could see that it recommends 13 Reasons Why. It's not just using the shows that I like. It's using all kinds of other things that um, the, I connected to Twitter. So there are other people that I follow on Twitter oh, who are um, recommending things and who's been... So here's like Sam Abul Samid, um, who I like? follow on Twitter. He's, he was... Oh, American Gods American is good. Gods. I only saw the first season. I keep meaning to watch the AP second one. That's Bio, how stars. Don't know that. Doom Patrol, Doom High Patrol. Maintenance. He watches a lot of TV. He watches weird TV. Better Things. That's, I heard, great. I'm going to add that. I don't know why I hadn't added that yet. Um, he watches Stranger Things. I'm sure he really enjoys that we're Is Stranger Things everyone. related to Better Things? Like, <laughs> oh. is Better Things a better version of Stranger Things? <laughs> or is Stranger Things like the bizarro universe of Better That's Things? A, have you heard of Better Things? No. Oh, it was... Um, the actress from Louis, um, who's amazing, and um, it used to be produced by Louis, but it no longer is. Oh, what a strange thing that <laughs> um, is. But Maybe that's what they mean by better things. It's, uh, no more, no yeah. more Louis C.K. <laughs> so, and you can, I, I just love it. So I, um, I also have lists. Let me see my lists. Okay, custom lists. So I have custom lists. Here are my treadmill shows. So here are the things I watch on the treadmill. Shameless, Homeland, Silicon Valley, Bosch, which someone I think Bosch was good. I liked I can't Bosch. Remember who Not great, but that. pretty good. Um, Billions, Blackish, You're the Worst, Mister. O. I have a lot of treadmill shows. <laughs> um, I just started watching Pen you. Fifteen. Have you seen? Never that? Never even heard of it. Really? That's on Netflix. I um, think that's Penis. <laughs> good one, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I'm I'm serious. That's what it's supposed to be. Oh, I get it. It's middle schoolers. Oh dear! <laughs> like you, apparently. Apparently, um, but they're regular. They're like in their thirties. The actresses and writers are play middle schoolers. I hate but that. They're in their thirties. Oh hate my god, that. it's hilarious. So they they kind of acknowledge that they're in their thirties. Like we know we don't look like we're middle schoolers. Well, I think they kind of do. Do you? Don't you? She does on the right. Woman yeah. on the left looks like looks like she has four kids. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, you can judge my shows all you want, but I have my the shows that I, <laughs> I watch judge. with my I family. Do. I judge. Um, and then the shows that I watch with Marco. So we have Barry, Killing Eve, and Fleabag, um, which we're watching together. Huh. And I can... Um, Fleabag was was interesting. You watch that? Yeah. Um, the, the, the actress... It's not back, is it? Yeah, it is. Season two of Fleabag oh, is here. Yeah. And she, is, she was the creator and the showrunner of Killing Eve. Oh. Um, Phoebe Waller-Burbridge. Waller... -Burbridge, Walla Waller, Phoebe Waller Bridge, who's the um, star and creator of Fleabag. She, Fleabag was very interesting, I thought. Yeah. So, um, and I can see the people that I'm following, um, and I'll get recommendations based on them too. So, uh, you want to sign up, I gather, with your Twitter account because. Can, yeah. I mean, I signed up with my Twitter. You can sign up with your Facebook, but I didn't do that. No Twitter access. Yeah. I can't sign up with my Facebook. You can sign up with your email. Yeah. But Let then, me try with my Twitter again, just to see. Authorize app. There you go. I also okay. have stats. Because then, then it has all your Twitter peeps. Yeah, right. But I can also... Says the guy in the sheep hat. <laughs> I can also see my stats of how much I've watched and my time spent oh my watching. Oh, God. And um, see my Twitter friend, Larry Greenberg. How does it know, though? Because you have to record it. It doesn't... It's not well, like no, no. It doesn't. It knows because I say I've watched those episodes. So this is actually not accurate at all. I just... Um, once you say watched, like you just click the... Oh, but it knows I have Netflix. It says because you have Netflix... Which Netflix show have you watched? Yeah, it, it has a lot of different signals that it'll, it knows yeah. a lot. You probably have to, yeah. you probably might want to read it. because you have Amazon, yeah. <laughs> you might perhaps wanna... you've watched these. I did definitely watch that. It's one of those things where you're giving away a little bit, but you're getting recommendations. Giving away a lot. Trending shows. See, I can't read the titles. I can only see the pictures. I guess if you can't recognize the show from the picture, oh, Chernobyl's good. I well, like that. You can that. click on it and see more information. I like that. Yeah. Dynasty. 
Ta ta ta. That thing's. I don't even. I just. I don't know、uh, what these are. It's probably recommendations based on other people who've. This、I've、is probably from Twitter. From you. Well, I think、Trending、mine was recommendations from things that my kids had watched、Most、on Netflix. Most added shows. I love Sherlock, but that's over, isn't it? Or maybe it's coming back. I don't know. No, you、love、can add、that. stuff that's over. Like Veep's on there. Yeah. Okay. I did watch Mr. Robot.、Eh. Westworld, I watched. I'm not happy about what's going on there. Uh, you can see I don't really watch a lot of network、uh, television. I did like Family Guy, I have to admit. I'm em- embarrassed to admit that, but I did like that. Homeland, that was very good. Peaky Blinders. True Detective, season three, have you、oh, watched that? Yeah. Really good. Wild. It got better.、Yeah. Season two was terrible.、Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, we could do a show where you and I just talk, talk about, about television. television. All right, let's do I do、it. not watch animated series, so I'm just going to skip right through that, except for I did watch Family Guy. Okay, I'm done. Tell us where you left off. Season, season zero, episode one.、Uh, I've watched all of that.、Uh, Orange is the New Black. I left off, you know, season three. I didn't get watched all of Barry. Peak and Blinders, same thing, season three. True Detective, all of that. Black Mirror, season four. Maisel, season. So this is good. So it shows you, like, I stopped Homeland and I'm embarrassed to admit this. Wow, that starts with five. Oh, there it goes. I think I'm embarrassed to admit this, but I think I stopped after three seasons. I think I stopped after three seasons. Yeah, some shows are too complicated for me. I'm a simple guy with、mm-hmm. simple needs.、Mm-hmm. So you like it, the TV time? Well, I'm, I'm giving it all my signals. Yeah, you're, you just gave、It's、it all my signals. Information. Would you like to get notified of episode releases? Hell yeah. <laughs> okay, here's my watch list. I am not going to watch Family Guy. I don't.、Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is it's based on. It. I can delete all of these. Remove, stop watching. Homeland, stop watching. Black Mirror, no, I'll keep watching that. Work that body for me. I didn't, oh, that's <laughs> Orange is a New Black. Peaky Blinders, I got tired of that too. So, unfortunately, it doesn't really know what I like. <laughs> Not yet. Why didn't you ask me about Game of Thrones, you nidge?、Uh, well, anyway, so this is good. So, you are giving it, and that's why it's free. Mm-hmm. You're, getting, you're giving it everything about what you watch. And I bet you Netflix would give them a lot of money for that, right? Probably, yeah. That's yeah. probably why the other app doesn't have Netflix. Cause yeah, Netflix wants to make a deal, developer, right?、Yeah. Stranger Things, yeah, baby. Game of Thrones, Elite, no. Casa de Papel, that's in Spanish. Money Heist, 13 Reasons Why. I won't watch that because people seem to kill themselves after they watch that. So that sounds depressing. The Hookup Plan. It's either sex, suicide, or the chilling adventures of Sabrina. Baby. I think See, we're learning、TV、a lot about you. TV by stinks. The recommendations you're getting. TV stinks. Yeah, no, don't judge me by that. How well, I、I'm、met your mother.、You. I'm not going to watch any of this junk. Riverdale? <laughs> junk. Okay. Re watching all of Breaking Bad. So it's an interesting mix of old and new and. There, that's the perfect TV show. Everything sucks. Hmm. Okay. Russian Doll's been pretty good. I've enjoyed that. Oh, yeah. I've heard that's good too. Started Lost in Space, Lost Interest. Oh, we launched that all together as a family. Is it good? Yeah, it's a good family show. Yeah. Good place I like, but I never get around to watching it. I love it. Yeah, it's good. It's cute. Oh, I really like the OA. The new season is even more incomprehensible. So, Sensei,、um, I watch. so this is good. I'm、app? sorry. Yes. <laughs> I, sometimes I get so swept away by your app cap that I look like a sheep. Oh, I guess.、Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. By the way, I just want to point out iOS recognizes me even as a sheep. Oh, interesting. Probably especially as a sheep.、Right? <sighs> After watching all that TV, you perhaps want something a little bit more relaxing. I do. This is a new game from the creators of one of the best games of all time, which if you haven't played, you should play called Bleck, B L E K. This is. Frost, and this is, this is not a freemium game. This is a game that you pay for and you get all the levels all at once, at least as far as I know. This is also one of those games,、uh, this is a genre of games where there's no explanation, you just have to figure it out. You actually watched me at the beginning of the show before the show started, figure it out.、Mm-hmm. Uh, it has great sound and effects. Listen, to, I'm going to turn the music all the way up because it really has wonderful sound. And once you figure out your goal here, Is to get all the particles into this black hole. So I think if I do this, in other words, I'm telling the particles move this way. And you see, as I'm filling up the hole, that 
clock goes all the way. Uh oh, I got to do something. I'm not getting as slow. I do you feel like you're getting everything? I feel like I'm missing some. Yeah, can you shove more toward it? Oh. Oh, it's going backwards. Oh, crud. <laughs> oh, it's going back out? I don't know. Now it's going up. Whew. Too many were escaping. So it's I guess it's a net. See again, I don't I don't have the explanation. Oh, you did it. So I guess it's the net. So I did it and then you can tap it and go on. So that's level four. So we're very, very early on. Mm. And I presume it's going to get harder, but even if it doesn't, it's kind of soothing. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's the yellow ones. Those have to go here. Oh, crud. I don't want... Oh, now I get why it's hard. <laughs> you got to get the yellow to go the yellow and the, the blue and the blue. Escaping. Too many are escaping. Getting away. Do over, man. There we go. There <laughs> we go. Whew. Whew. I feel like... Oh, I did it. Yeah. Isn't that satisfying? What was that movie? Arrival? Yeah, it's like a rival. I'm learning a new game, a new language, yeah. an alien language. There's a blue hole there. How am I going to do this? No, that's not going to work. So I can have multiple paths. That's good to know. Isn't this kind of, I don't know, it's kind of mesmerizing, yeah. kind of beautiful. It's so far not difficult. Which in a way is good because that can be stressful. A mm -hmm. game that's hard to play where you go, uh. I think this is the kind of thing you could play while you're watching Game of Thrones so you don't yeah. get too upset. Mm -hmm. Like maybe the second time you're watching it. <laughs> oh, what's that? Is what? there, oh, something's going on. That's not Break good. Apart. I'm going to lose. <sighs> oh, no. What's that? Oh, man. Oh, so close. <laughs> nah, it didn't work. Okay, so some of it gets bent somehow. Yeah. <gasps> I did it somehow. I don't you know how. It. What do you think? I love it. It's four ninety nine. Is that what you said? Yeah, I think totally it's five bucks. It. Actually, Kevin, you should check because this one little small beef about the app store that nobody else cares about. There it is, four ninety nine. Uh, is that once you buy something, you can't tell what the price was. Mm -hmm. um, I got a, a Twitter correction about developer accounts. Um, you said earlier there. $99. I know you get a free one. I know. I'm joking. Okay. <laughs> He's, he was joking. Although, someone. with the free one, can you uh, can you submit to bug, bug reports? I don't Good know. Question. I don't know. We'll find that answer next week. Fortunately, I don't mind corrections because I... <laughs> iOS Today, we record every Tuesday, 9-ish a.m. Pacific time. If you want to contact us, email me, Megan, at twit.tv. You can also email iOS Today at twit.tv. I, I get that, too. Um, and send us your videos. Put them up on YouTube. Send me the link. You can put them up public, private, whatever. You can uh, just... Record them on your phone and then share them with me. You can share them with me in Google Drive. Pretty much any way, uh, I'll take them. Make them 30 seconds or less. And uh, I'm on Twitter, Megan Maroney. Leo is occasionally on Twitter once I'm a month. mesmerized. He's memori mesmerized. Memorized. Subscribe, I've memorized. Subscribe to the show. That's important. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our broadcast day. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on iOS Today. Did you mention that you can watch the show nine Pacific time, nine in the morning Pacific time on that. Tuesdays. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, did you mention that I'm still looking for a way to let Megan know I'm coming? Yes. Uh, yeah. Homework. Please. Your homework, homework this week. A shortcut. A shortcut. Mm -hmm. You can tweet Megan at Megan Maroney. Mm -hmm. uh, you can tweet me, believe it or not. I never read it, but you could at Leo Laporte. And you can email Megan at twit.tv. Mm -hmm. We've said all that. So I yep. think there's one more thing to say, which is thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on iOS Today. I've been sheared. <laughs>